I'm Terence Holt. I'm a, a doctor and a professor at the University of North Carolina School of Medicine. Um, and I'm here in Iowa today because I recently published a collection of short stories about medical residency called Internal Medicine. What's the relationship between writing and doctoring is one that I get a lot of. Um, and, you know, they're both, you can think of it a couple of different ways. One is that they're both interpretive practices, um, interpretive practices which result in some kind of action. For a doctor, you try, the patient brings you a story and you try to revise it. And in order to revise it, you have to really understand what it means to, to that patient. And then you try to intervene to, to shape the next chapter as well as you can. And, you know, for me, writing is primarily an interpretive practice. It's how I understand things. I never sit down knowing what I'm going to say. I can't imagine you could ever produce anything interesting that way. For me, things emerge through the process that I didn't know about myself or what I'm writing about. And that's, that's personally why I do it. Um, the other facet of this question is that I think for doctors especially, for whom the biggest challenge is achieving the kind of insight that allows them to know what their own particular interest is, and I mean that in the sense of conflict of interest when dealing with a patient. That kind of in insight is hard to come by, but I find that in writing about medical situations, trying to get down as honest and complete an account as you can, um, when you go and look at that account, the places where it doesn't hang together, those are where things that you weren't aware of can be found. I teach a writing workshop uh, now twice a year at the med school for medical students where I've been doing this for the better part of a decade and it's it's really exciting watching these these you know, very young and enthusiastic idealistic people at the beginning of their careers start to to grapple with with why they're there and, and watching them learn things about themselves to that it's just it's really the most most exciting teaching I've ever done I love it I've written in a lot of different places. I'm capable of screening out a lot of distraction. Waiting, the waiting room at my local Ford dealer is a good one. Um, I've gotten some good work done there because yet when you're there, you, you're often there for a long time. Um, but uh, ideally, and sometimes I achieve this, it's really early in the morning before anybody else is awake. And at that point, everything's quiet. And I don't have anybody, any other voices in my head at that point. I haven't heard any, any any other language that day. So whatever comes out is less likely to be unconsciously borrowed from somewhere else. From time to time, there are certain texts I'll return to if I'm feeling like I need to get in touch with whatever it was that at one point made me think uh, that writing was something I could do. Um, I'm really fond of um, the Lattimore translation of the Odyssey. That one just sucks me back again, again, and again. You know, I don't like modifiers all that much. I mean, a modifier is a confession of, of, of failure to some, to some extent. But, um, you know, I try to pair every story. I mean, a short story is the form in which there can be no wasted gesture. Um, so I just try to take out as much as possible. And sometimes I find I've taken out too much. Um, but it's a good thing to do anyway because when you strip a story down to the bones that's when you find out what's really going on in there. Um, that was something I learned very early on um, and I, God help me, I have to credit that to Ernest Hemingway. I can't believe I committed myself to saying anything about Ernest Hemingway. No, there isn't and the reason for that is I'm probably the least premeditated writer I've ever met. I don't have any kind of plan or goal. Do. The one thing I do know is that, um, and this is just looking back, it seems that I do a certain kind of thing for a while and exhaust it, and that's a collection, and then the next thing I do is very, very different. You know, I think I know why people say that. There are times, a couple of times in my life, under some kind of pressure, I've I've sat down in the morning and gotten up very, very stiff 10, 12 hours later with a, with a story that's fully formed. Um, and at times like that, you really feel, you know, you think you know what, what the Greeks meant when they said the God spoke th through, through you. Because, um, you know, you don't really 
I, I never have any conscious memory of, of the process. It's just, you know, it's like a fugue state almost. This universe we inhabit is, you know, it's, it's enormous <laughs> and, and full of mystery and, and wonder and beauty and all that and, and a lot of other bad stuff too. And, you know, I think when you're writing, I think what you're doing is getting access to your mind and your mind as something in communication with all the cultural forces that shaped it and also all this other stuff that seems to lie underneath culture and, and you know, the hardwiring. You're getting access to that in ways that you don't have access to otherwise. And, um, you know, it's funny, I say I'm not spiritual, but I have spent a fair amount of my time um, sitting, doing nothing in the manner prescribed in Buddhism. Um, but for me, that's, that's a cognitive exercise, you know, I mean, it's, and it, it, it makes, you know, I, I don't think I believe in reincarnation, but I do think there's such a thing as enlightenment. But I think that's something that happens inside the brain. The brain is just a really big place about which we know almost nothing. And one of the cool things about, about literature in general is that that's access to the functioning of the mind in ways that we don't have any handle on at all. But, you know, I mean, you, you, and, and writing is the same thing. I mean, I, I was telling a group of medical students yesterday, and I'm, you know, I'm never anywhere near as smart when I'm trying to be as I am when I'm not. And when I'm writing, I'm not trying to be smart. I'm just trying to make a story and have it make sense. And I let all the rest of it take care of itself. And I think by getting out of the way, it's the, it's the via negativa, you know. Um, that's how you manage to transcend your own lumpy awkwardness of intention. Um, pretty much anybody who hasn't been prevented from doing it I mean, one of the things that I tell, I mean, I teach writing to medical students, and they're, they can be kind of anxious about it because, for one thing, they're achievers. They really want to do whatever you tell them to do, and they don't have much experience with it. But what I like to point out is, if you think of every cultural practice that our species has developed for as far back as we've had cultural practice, stories that's the oldest one that's still in universal use. There are no fires burning in this room. I don't see people, you know, killing each other or doing the other ancient professions in this room. But there's storytelling going on in this room. And, you know, that's how... There must be something wired in us that makes that such a powerful way of understanding and building a shared understanding of who we are and what what we're doing here. Um, and considered in those terms, everybody, you know, everybody's a, a writer. We all participate in storytelling. Some of us, for reasons I don't fully understand, which is putting it mildly, go to the extreme of writing it down, which is really, you know, narcissistic and, and, and you know, egocentric thing, to, egocentric thing to do. I mean, it's, if you think about stories as they, you know, why they matter to us, it's very much a communal activity and it's, and it's quite odd that it has become, probably thanks to the technology of, of writing, um, as that's evolved, it's become a very idiosyncratic and, and individual act that then finds its way out into the public and with odd results like somebody like me sitting here being, being filmed. Mm -hmm.